we started the recording. Okay. So hello, everybody. Um, I hope you are having a wonderful Monday. Uh, so today I am starting off the, um, the first um, application we're going to talk about is going to be predictable. And um, it, um, like we, we learned a little bit about it, um, especially for those that haven't have experienced um, using this application before um, from um, some of the videos we saw earlier, it is a text-based application. So um, this is going to be good for, um, as we're going to see, for people who are um, literate, able to um, um, use a keyboard. Um, there are some other functions that allow um, uh, that allow someone to use their um, their uh, eyes to select keys too. Which, which there's a, um, a videos um, within the application themselves that the, themselves itself that uh, talk about that. So let's go ahead and move along. So by the end of the training today, you'll be able to identify individuals who would benefit from this app, set up and personalize vocabulary and maximize um, the use of the app for phone communications. Um, but it's, it's an effective tool for um, using it, um, being able to communicate over the phone. Um, so considerations for using this application. So the user has developed or retained effective literacy skills. They are comfortable with text-based communication. They may need an alternative or customized keyboard, and they use phrases to communicate. So we're gonna talk about setting up a user. Okay, so there is a, okay. So for those of you that want to follow along on the predictable application while we go through some examples and how to's, um, and if you, if you haven't done the setup wizard um, at, at this point, you want to do that now. Um, in order to use the setup wizard, you need to uh, make sure that the iPad is connected to Wi-Fi. And then you, and once you, once you go, it's going to walk you right through it. You're going to, um, so when the first time you're turning it on, it'll um, ask you to um, set up an account with Therapy Box. And Therapy Box is, is going to be where it's going to back up all of your information so that um, all of the customization, which is what this app is, is really good, good for, is, is all the customized phrases and words. And, and it's going um, to start remembering the words you're using, the phrases you're using more and more. Um, it's gonna and it's gonna back up all that information in Therapy Box. So you need to have that account set up. Um, so you have to go ask you set up a username and password. Um, then you're gonna register now, and then it's gonna send an email to your email address. You're gonna go um, like you know setting up signing up for a lot of different things. You're gonna go to your email and and click activate to activate your account. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. For those who haven't done that, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for two minutes and you can do that too. Navigation um, within the application itself. So in the number one on my screen, which is the upper right hand corner is the speak button. Um, anytime you're going to type a phrase, you could change it in the options to how it's going to deliver that message. So um, the speak button, I could have it to where when I type a sentence and hit, hit a period, it automatically speaks a sentence for me. Or I could compose a paragraph and at the end I could hit speak and it'll speak the whole thing for me. Or you could do it word by word, um, whichever you prefer. And the, and the speak button is how would I use because I, I normally like to type a paragraph and then hit speak. The use key, which is that little blue arrow um, uh, next to the number two, that is one of the four quick keys. And the use key, we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Um, they have, they have a, it, it's gonna allow you to do a lot of different things actually. 
Uh, three is the um, delete key, the little garbage can um, icon. Um, it's pretty obvious it's gonna allow you to, allow you to um, delete a word a, or a sentence. Um, and number four is the categories quick key. If you have, um, if you go to categories using that quick key, um, it'll take you, you'll, your keyboard will go away and it'll bring up the phrase categories. And once those are up, that will that icon will turn into the keyboard icon and that's you're going to switch back to the keyboard um, five on your screen the little happy face is the emotes quick key um like the video talked about it, it, it's a lot of different little things you can do with that there's like clearing your throat or yawning um or whistling um so and and, and there's a lot of and you can create your own as well which is pretty fun <clears throat> The uh, number six, which is in the upper left-hand part of the screen, is the bubble prediction. So as I'm typing my message, it's going to suggest the words it's, um, that it thinks I'm going to use next. It's going to be um, smart prediction. So it's going to be the more, I, the more I use this application, the more it's going to learn what I'm doing and, and what I normally say. And it's going to um, get better and better at predicting the words I'm going to use next. So number seven is the strip prediction, and that's going to give me um, word as a more uh, more than one word prediction of okay, I, you're probably going to say these words next, um, but maybe your, your next sentence could begin with this. Um, so you have the option to use um, have a bubble prediction on the screen, or strip prediction on the screen, or both. Um, and so the I like having both on there. I guess it just helps. It makes you go faster, and they might be kind of too much in, of one of, of, of a good thing for some people, um, which whatever you prefer. So on the bottom left, the little cog or gear is the settings key. And, um, you know, that's where we're going to set up, um, customize the application. And number nine is the keyboard feature keys, which can be customized based on what you use the most. So um, like, on the screen right now, you're gonna see it, it looks a little green square with a pencil on it. That is gonna take you to the handwriting feature. So I'm gonna be able to, instead of um, typing on a keyboard, I'll actually be able to write out the words um, and it's gonna figure that out or search. Um, or the, the little phone with the two lines coming off it, the sound lines, it's a, that's a floor hold feature. Okay, and I'm gonna get into all those things in more detail um, later in the presentation here. So sound settings, selecting a voice. <clears throat> so in order to select a voice, I'm gonna, now just so you know, I'm gonna go through this basically twice. I'm gonna, go th I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it on the slide and then I'm gonna go through um, in the application itself and, and just kind of walk through it. So if I lose you on the slide, um, I'm, I'm gonna go through it again on the application itself. So on, in, in the application, I'm gonna tap on the, little, the gear settings icon. And then from there, you're going to tap speech. And then to use an iOS voice uh, from iOS or enhanced free voice for Fritos voices um, are nuanced. So you, you, you can use one of those. Um, and then you're going to tap, tap predictable to exit the, men, the menu. And that's going, to, um, that's going to save that option application itself. All right, so I'm gonna tap the icon, the gear icon on the bottom here. Okay, and the, on the, in the um, column on the left, the very top one is speech. And the predictable voices, if I, if I use the predictable voices, um, I, I select on the English one, I believe I'm using Tom. Tom, the um, enhanced American English. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm in high quality American voice. Okay, and then I'm gonna tap predictable in the upper left hand corner and it's gonna save that for me. Okay. Now adding an iOS voice. Okay, now I'm to get back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So within the iPad settings, so this is going to be not within the application itself. 
you're gonna you're gonna go, leave the application and go into the actual iPad settings. So you want so in order to do that, you want to press the iPad Home button, and then you're gonna enter the um, the settings tab for, for the so the settings tab, which is gray little cog, and then you are going to hit um, accessibility. And then tap on spoken content, and I, um, I believe there is, um, I th there may be another a, an older version of this that is going to be slightly different. So if some if you have something different, let me know, and I can I'll try to walk you through the other way. So click on spoken content, um, tap on voices, and here I have. Um, Tom enhanced on there as well. And you could also select from here, you could also select um, other languages. Um, if you want to have Spanish on there or um, when you're, if you're on Wi-Fi, you could download. If you want, if you need to download, you have to be on Wi-Fi to do that. Um, like right now it's defaulting to Paulina. Um, so I probably either, uh, change the um this the rate so the voice gets lower or <laughs> finds i find a different one okay so and then um once you have tapped uh ch check the language and then you have it um, and pick your voice then you can tap um let's see so you tap on sorry tap on the cloud icon to download it and then um and then once you're done you can exit and go back to the particular application. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure, go ahead. Does selecting the voice automatically um, change the keyboard to that? So, so if, you, if you pick Spanish, right. for example, will it switch to Spanish or any other language? So yeah, it, so it, it's going to give you the um, options are going to be based on the uh, the language you're going to choose there. So um, let me let's see. Let's let's for instance, let's try this. Okay, so if I go spoken content voices Spanish Paulina. Okay, and I believe. Okay, let me see. Um, also, okay, so general language and region. Believe because I have I have Spanish in there, so I believe because that I have that available. Okay, so I'm gonna leave here. Go back in the application. Settings cog, keyboard. Okay. Let's see, Kevin. Do you remember? Do you remember how to get to the the change the language of the keyboard? I, I think you need to go up to speech up at the top oh. and change it to Spanish. Uh, okay, let's see here. Espanol towards the bottom. Oh, did I skip past it? I must have. All right, am I missing it? <laughs> have you downloaded the voice from the iPad? Um, I believe I already features? did. I believe I already did. Um, I think you need to go back one. You're, you, you went too far in. Okay. So, all right, let's see here. Oh, uh, yeah, here, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Choose Paulina. <laughs> let's do that. Hi, hi, my name is Paulina. I'm a high quality Spanish voice. Hi, 
This is what your predictable well, I guess I can't make her voice any lower than that, so. Like. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so now I have that. Let me go back. And then keyboard. Okay. Now I want to have it. Tell you what, we're I'll I'll look into this and I'll make a note and then I'll we'll, I'll follow up with um, how to switch that that uh, keyboard over. So if you so if you go into the Apple iPad settings and go to general, okay, and then you click on keyboards, okay, and then you click on uh, uh, your general keyboard. Click on keyboards at the top. Mm -hmm. And then you can click on Spanish Mexico. Okay. And that should be the Spanish keyboard. Yeah. So, okay. And then if you go into back into predictable, it should display. Yep, I'll have to. We'll have to figure this one out. I, I thought I thought I'd had it set up the right way to go in there, but um, so yeah, we'll we'll email you out and and with um, a breakdown of the step by step on how to switch from one keyboard to the other. The reason, sorry, the reason why I'm asking with predictable, there's a predictable Spanish. Um, but I was wondering about other languages also besides, um, and we don't have to do this right now. Just okay. I'll, and, I'll, and I'll look at. I'll, I'll just. I'll just do it. Not, I won't just. I'll, I'll do it for in general, just to make sure that w we have uh, access to all these uh, any all as you know, a bunch of different languages through Predictable. All right. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Now, modifying voice qualities. <clears throat> so, in the predictable application, you're gonna uh, when, when you go in, you can click on the gear and then you hit speech, and then you're gonna see a gear icon with little arrows on it at the top, and you and you click on that to, and that'll take you to the speech settings menu. And once you're in the speech settings menu, then you're able to change the um, rate and the pitch level. And so you slow down and speed up your speech. Um, I find that different voices you select need different speeds. Sometimes um, some of them are more clear than others. Um, and sometimes um, they're, they're, or they're, once they're slowed down, they, it's really clear and, and sometimes it, there the the rate of speech that comes with that voice is faster and you might want to you know might be okay um, and then also you can adjust the pitch of the voice um, however you like it at the um, you'll see where it says uh, speak um, options at the bottom um, that will allow you to um, personalize when predictable speaks um, and I'm gonna, I'll demonstrate this in a second but the like I said, I like it to speak when I'm done um, typing a paragraph, but you might like like it to speak right after you're done with each word or at the end of a sentence after you hit a period. Um, and then custom words, that's um, if if, you, if there's a word you you find yourself using a lot, and the way it is um, pronounced in um, by the application is off, you can go to custom words into the word how it's gonna be spelled on the screen and then enter a customized pronunciation based on how you would like to um, do this. And um, I, was, I, I was putting something in here, um, talking my, uh, for my kids and, I, and, I, and, they, and they went, I have three high schoolers and it was saying, get your behind out of bed. Well, <laughs> what it was saying was, get your behind out of bed. And I'm like, I wanted to 
enunciate the B in behind. So I went and put B E E dash H I N D. And, and so now when I, now when I um, use that phrase, it speaks it perfectly. So that's just an example of how I use it. <laughs> okay. And so, and then once you're done um, with the customized words and you can um, tap predictable and I will sh go in the app and show you how that works. So tap on my cog, I'm gonna go speech and then, um, and then I have the, little, the cog with the arrows in the top right corner. And then here's my, and it'll, it'll give you a demonstration of what it sounds like when you move it. Hi, this is what your predictable voice sounds like. Here's Paula still. Hi, this is what your predictable voice sounds like. Hi, this is what <laughs> your predictable voice sounds like. So, and then the speak option. So, speak after space speak after cursor um, you can also have it set to where it clears it after after it speaks it and then publishing so that's where if you're going to type it it's going to flip it over so um, if without you having to turn your screen around someone that's across from you can be able, you'll be able to read what you've just typed and it will do that automatically and I'm gonna Hi, my name is Tom. I'm in high quality American voice. Okay. So sound settings. So to modify the sound settings in the application, you're gonna click on the gear icon and tap keyboard and if you toggle the key tone to blue, you're gonna, it's gonna make audible clicks every time it moves from one screen to the next. And then when it's toggled to gray, there'll, there'll be no key tone sounds and when buttons are selected. So using my settings, keyboard, is your key tone, blue, and then it's gonna start making sounds for me. So the quick keys, so let's talk about those a little bit. So the use quick key is that little blue arrow. And you, the, so you can just tap the use to copy or paste um, a message in the window. And you could also, um, and, and they'll like copy and paste it into um, email or a text or social media, um, Twitter, the uh, iMessage if that's available. I, I'm, I'm, and that may only be available once someone has logged in to the um, iPad. So maybe not on the demos and short term loan iPads. Um, but then also you can access um, history to see uh, the most recently um, composed messages. The, um, and the little um, garbage can there is the delete and to remove part or all the text in the message window. The blue lines, the categories, it's gonna take you to the phrase categories. Um, so you tap on the category to open phrases um, within that category. If the categories are open on the keyboard icon, the sorry, if the categories are open, the keyboard icon replaces the phrase icon. And then you tap on the keyboard icon to get back to the keyboard. And the little smiley face is the emotes, uh, which gets you to different various emotion sounds. So rate enhancement word prediction. So predictable's word prediction, so it predicts words based on phrases that the user commonly uses. Um, also, it has uh, based on context that it's 
derived from the previously typed words and also the user's own vocabulary. And the more the, the um, predictable is used by this user, the better it's gonna learn the user's grammar, their style of speech, and their word usage patterns. So if you uh, tap on the gear icon and you tap word prediction, um, from there, you're gonna tap on prediction type, and that's where you're gonna see it. You, you can have the bubble prediction, and which is gonna show you up to four words as an overlay in the message window, and then strip prediction, um, which is right above the keyboard, and or you can have both. And then you can um, make it to where it's gonna predict one or two words. And then when, when you're done setting that, you, um, setting that up, then you click on predictable in the window. And I'm gonna demonstrate that right here. All right, word prediction, prediction type. So right now I have bubble and strip. So let's say this, on this just one bubble. And so because it's bubble, it's giving me just one word option. If I have strip, I have one word or two words I could do. And then I could also do small bubble, large bubble, larger font in there. And then auto completion. Um, if you are a fast typer or if the user is a fast typer, auto completion could, could um, sometimes get in the way a little bit because it's throwing, it starts throwing words in there that's easy to mistakenly have that word get entered in there. Maybe it's not one that you want in there. Um, so that's why I have mine toggled to off. Um, and then spell check. So it'll, if it's, if you misspell something, it'll um, change, highlight it in orange. And, and then you can have, if you like, you can do autocorrect. Okay. So now we, we just selected the bubble. So we only have the bubble there, not the strip above the, above the keyboard now. Okay. PowerPoint. So rate enhancement, um, dyslexia support. So if you tap on the gear icon and, and this is a little bit what we just talked about, um, you go, go to word prediction and prediction type and you toggle auto completion to on, change the spell check options to highlight the misspelled words or to autocorrect and tap predictable. And then and this is this um, group of features is 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 to help um, in this setting to help um, to support a user that has dyslexia. Okay, the feature keys. So if you tap on the gear icon, and I'll demonstrate this in a second, and you go to keyboard, and then you tap on keyboard feature keys, and then you are gonna tap on um, keyboard feature um, image icons, and then select, um, and then emit, and it'll come up uh, feature emotes or symbol. And then you wanna scroll and select the feature. and um, I, the, now the one that has, I like, I like having the, the plus symbol on there because it's e easy for me to add phrases that way. Um, the floor hold one I really like, which is the little phone with the two sound lines coming off from it. Um, you could have the handwriting one in there. I believe that's what's on my, the other, my third feature set up on mine right now, but it's a lot to choose from there. Um, so, and let's, let's go there and demonstrate that. Keyboard feature keys. Okay, so there's my handwriting recognition. I want to have a search. Oh, of course, I already have a search on this. So it's, it's, it's telling me why am I doing that. So I add a phrase, and I'll change that one to handwriting recognition. Or I can 
have it go to Twitter. I put delete on there, phrases, my emote menu. And you, and you could change, let me modify that to up to three. And then here's the emotes and symbols. And I'll leave my emotes on there. That's good. Okay. So handwriting recognition. So when you tap on the green pen and paper icon and um, you can begin writing there and uh, you can use the writing um, pad prediction or tap on the brown pencil eraser icon to rewrite letters or erase letters. And what is cool about it, it's gonna, it recognizes both um, cursive and um, print. I was kind of surprised. I, I, I figured it cursive might be a tricky for it, but um, it got my name right. <laughs> so and let's see. Oh, I see I got rid of my little handwriting quick key. See, that's what happens. Uh, automatically, my handwriting is terrible. Okay. And there it is. It got Kevin. It was one of my. Congratulations, Kevin. I can spell your name. So it's it's simple. It's simple to use. And um, I believe the. You need to write. If I am. Try this, Scott. Yeah, so you need to write the screen as one word and then it's gonna save it above. So, Scott was here. All right, so setting up your keyboard. So you're gonna tap on the gear icon and click on keyboard in the left-hand column and then select the keyboard of your choice. I always use a QWERTY. I'm, if you, some people might like a, an Apple keyboard or a 10 key or a, I think the high frequency and the ABCD one would just mess me up. Um, so that's, so I, yeah, I go with, I, that's when I use QWERTY and then you have other options there below. Um, and then when uh, you, after you select your keyboard, you click on the check mark above and tap predictable. Using and adding emotes. Okay, so if you, um, tap on the gear icon again, and then in the left-hand column, you're going to hit layout. And then you're going to clap, uh, 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 tap on manage emotes. And then to create a new emote, you're going to tap create new emote. And then you're going to type out the name of your emote and you can choose from the audio library or you could record a sound. I thought that was really fun. Um, and then choose an image for your emote and tap predictable. So let's see here. My cog, layout, manage emotes. Um, one of our, in my family is the, our favorite things is the, the cat from, um, that is um, witnessing the fight in, in uh, the movie Puss in Boots. And so we made one, well, I made one 
<laughs> to play for my kids because they thought that would be funny. Um, and so that's one of my emotes I made. And so when I go to my pretty cool app, click on my emotes. Now, mine's super quiet because I, it's kind of recording it from uh, a, uh, another sound, but the, uh, let's see, which I thought was hilarious. And, and, and the, my favorite, which was the most, the, got the eyebrow raised from my wife was this, the, mm, the mm, male one. Mm. So, it was, uh, we were having a lot of fun with those. All right. So I'm going to go back to my application before I get too sidetracked. Okay. All right. Accessibility, the floor hold. Okay, so the floor hold function lets the communication partner know you are still typing a message. So this feature will speak the message to let the listener know that you're um, composing. And you can choose to speak um, an automatic phrase after a set amount of time or speak an automatic phrase by manually pressing the floor hold button. So to, um, to get to these settings, you're gonna um, tap on the gear icon, open settings, tap accessibility, tap floor hold, and then you're gonna, um, so you select the floor hold option and then, and then automatic will speak the floor hold message at the duration you set once you tap the um, floor hold button. If you select manual, you must tap the floor hold button in order to speak that message. And then you can use a slider to change how frequent you want the floor hold to speak. If you want to add a new phrase um, for the floor hold to speak, you can just click on, uh, tap on, uh, add, a new now add new floor hold phrase to add the phrase. And then tap on the floor hold phrases to select which one will speak and a check mark will appear. And then once you've done that, um, you click on predictable. So customizing and changing the appearance of the application. Um, I'll just, I'll work, we'll do this slide. They, the, since they kind of covered it in the video that Kevin showed out, I, don't, I won't demonstrate it, but it's something you can go back and look and look at if you, um, later if you like. You would tap on the gear settings, um, the gear icon to open the settings. And then you tap layout. And then tap appearance. You modify the settings to suit your needs and then tap predictable again. Okay. So <clears throat> to edit an existing category, now this is where um, a lot of scripting is gonna be done and um, it's just, and it's it's a, a really quick and easy way to get um, to save a lot of your commonly used things you're going to say and 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 really be able to have basic conversations based on just what you have saved in these in these categories. So you're going to tap the phrases quick key, which is the uh, the green lines. Um, on the on the right and in, in the with the feature keys and, and they'll bring up the um the square the picture squares at the bottom and then you're gonna if you to to um edit the name of one of the categories you click on the pencil and then once you actually click on the pencil then you click on the category you want to edit and you'll get three options move edit and delete so you would hit edit Customize it as you like, and then once you're done, you're gonna hit predictable. So let's go into the application. And so right now I have the three lines. Click that brings up my pictures. Um, let's say I go hit the pencil. And let's say food and drink, and I'll say edit. Um, so I'll just say. Grub is my category, 
and I hit the hide keyboard and it brings so I could see the rest of it. So I could take I could take a picture from the camera and choose something else from the gallery uh, or choose another predictable image. So if I went in the predictable images, let's see, what do I want? I believe isn't there a burger in here? See, my uh, wife doesn't let me have carbs, so I think this loaf of bread is probably what I want here. So there we go. So, and then, um, and if you want to move a category around, so we saw that when you got those three options popped up after you clicked on the category, you can move, and then it's gonna bring them up in a grid. And then I could move this around to where it's, it's, it makes sense in my daily conversations. So I might move um, grub maybe by at home or, or, or I maybe move the, um, my family up to in front of grub and at home or something like that. And I hold that, push my, push my finger on the image, hold it down, and it pops up, and then I'm able to move it and then release it. And when I'm done, I hit done in the right, upper right-hand corner there. Okay. And then if you want to delete a category, um, same thing. You just hit delete. Now, just know that when you, um, it'll ask you to finalize that decision to delete because if once you delete it, it's gone. It's, it's, and it will not be restored later on. Okay. Okay, editing an existing phrase, label, or message. Okay, so when you click on the, fr the, the phrase's quick key, which is the green little lines, and you click on a category, once you're in the category, then you hit the little pencil icon at the bottom to edit. Um, you click on, the, uh, click on the, the phrase you want to edit, then you get three options. The move, edit, and delete. Um, tap on edit to customize it. And then when you're done, you tap on predictable. So similar to the last pro the last process, but instead of hitting, I get there, get the categories up. So instead of hitting the pencil now, I'm gonna enter the category first. So things I like. And then, then I hit the pencil. And, and then let's see, I could, I love it. So or this is great, I'll edit that one. So this is great, it's gonna be, this is super great, because I am just a super great kind of a guy. I don't know. And then hit my little, you can hit predictable or it's going to ask you to save and then it's done. Okay. So back to the PowerPoint. So editing a phrase or a category image. I'll, I'll go over one of these cause it's going to be similar to the process for the, um, the other ones we should do, I should do the difference between the, the doing the category and the phrase and the indiv individual phrase, it's just like that for these images. So I'm going to choose a, choose an image from the camera roll, take a live picture or add a picture from Predictable's image library. So um, you're going to tap the phrases quick key to open up the category section. And then you are going to um, tap the pencil icon to allow editing. And then you may have more categories of fit on the screen. So if you don't see the category you want to edit, you could swipe left to get to your next um, group of categories and then select your category. And then you get your move, edit and delete. You want to click edit. And then, so if you want to take a picture from your camera, that's great. Um, do that and click okay. And it's going to use that image or you could choose from the gallery 
um, the stuff that you already had on your camera roll or stuff you've saved from previous things. Um, I think mine somehow connected to some Google images, so it has a bunch of stuff I took a long time ago. Um, and then, or you can use one of the images from Predictable, Predictable's image library. And then you're gonna click on the disk to save, um, or if you hit Predictable, it'll ask you to save, and then you can get back into the application. So let's, and I'll show you that one, and then I'll, we'll talk about how to do it for phrases too, which will be similar. Oops, got ahead of myself. Okay, click my three lines. Let's see, stuff I say all the time. Uh, add a new phrase. Well, tell you what. My name is Scott Harris. My name is so Scott Harris. I'm going to edit Harris. that one to add a picture. In image, choose from gallery. I have lots of fun pictures in here. Let's see. I guess I have none of just myself though, so that's as good as it gets. There, okay. And doing that for phrases is similar. So to add a picture to a phrase, you're gonna, um, you're gonna swipe and, and click on the category to edit. Then you click on the pencil icon and then you're gonna tap the phrase to edit. Click edit to, and then add the image the same exact way. Okay. Communication over any speakerphone. So the most simple way to use an AAC device with a telephone is a listen and speak over a speakerphone. Some applications um, also have features that support email, text messaging, and social media. So communicating in person versus communicating at a distance. So when using your voice option tablets, um, individuals have the opportunity to speak with others in a variety of settings. This may even be the first time that they've had the opportunity to speak to someone on a phone independently or carry on a conversation with an audible voice. Some individuals with complex communication needs, um, or CCN, have no discernible verbal, vo verbal speech. So others may use a little bit of verbal speech that could be understood if it's accompanied by signs, um, facial expressions, gestures, or no or low tech um, communication systems. AAC systems are a tool to be considered for anyone with CCN. Many individuals with CCN depend upon a combination of multiple strategies or use, um, or use of total communication in which uh, the, commu the, sorry, the communication partner can see them or um, hear the device or verbal speech. So with, when using the device, um, you have to com consider the communication setting. So you can hear me and see me. So being together in the same room gives individuals the ability to use nonverbal strategies and their device or verbal speech. And, or you can only hear me. So if I wanna speak on the phone or I need to speak to an individual who's in another room, I cannot rely on my nonverbal non communication strategies. And so the, you can hear me and see me, you could use it's your signs, facial expressions, gestures, vocalizations, context, communication device. So you have all those options to me, um, to all those options available. But if you can only hear me, vocalizations, context, communication device, um, I'm, I'm more limited to how I'm gonna be able to um, communicate to another person. So one of the 
primary reasons um, for this program is to allow individuals to um, more independently communicate over a phone. So one of the, the best ways for that is, um, is preparing phone scripts. And like I, I mentioned that with the, um, with the phrases, um, a lot of what I'm building in there is conversation scripts. And a lot of those you're gonna use in your day-to-day -day, um, interaction with friends and family. But in, um, if I'm gonna call um, my bank or my doctor's office or something like that, I'm gonna, I have to set up a script so that I can get my point across um, in a way they're gonna understand. So, so this, my phone script's gonna allow individuals to prepare for communicating over the phone by pre-constructing the main points that need to be communicated during the phone call. So the phone scripts help speed up communication, get the main point across accurately, control the conversation, and repair breakdowns. So the contents of a phone script, you manage the call, um, and examples that would be, hello, I'm using a, speak, a device to speak, please be patient, or um, please bear with me while I use a speech generating device. So basically, I am setting the expectations for the phone call. Um, compose greetings and closings. Um, hi, how are you? Talk to you later, bye. Repair breakdowns, can you understand me? or does that make sense? And then, um, and of course, it's always good to compose the main points of what needs to be communicated ahead of time. Okay. So let's add a phone chat category to our application. So we're gonna tap the phrases quickie icon, tap on the pencil icon, and then you're gonna hit add category. If you can't see where it says add category, swipe until you see the little big plus sign. Swipe left. And then um, you're gonna type the category name and then hit predictable to save. So I have already added that category uh, when I was going through this, but I will show you how I did that. Okay, oops. All right, once I click that, then my add category pops up. Okay, and I was saying add phone chat. Since I already have that, I'm gonna say um, jokes. And hit my little save, and there I have my jokes categories. If I wanna add a picture to that, I could go back and add a picture. Okay. Okay, so adding a phrase. So if you navigate to your phone chat you just created and you scroll down or, um, or swipe to locate the, the um, phrase you want, to, you want to use, tap text and then type in, uh, and then type in text to speak and your text to display which are generally for me the same, unless I'm, this is gonna be a long phrase. And then you can have um, the option of adding an image or audio to the phrase, and then hit predictable to save. So let's see, I'm gonna go into the application and I'm gonna add a new phrase to my, um, to my phone chat, okay. All right, so once I'm in here, add a new phrase, and click on text, text to speak. So, thank you for assisting me with my account. Okay. And I could type that all out on the next line, but or I could just copy and by copy it by 
long touching it and then hitting, then moving the little bars, copy the whole thing, and then do the same thing down in the text of display so it pastes it there. And then I am done. Okay, and then hit predictable, save discard, save. All right. Thank you for assisting me with my account. Oh, so apparently I have my speech set up to go really slow and low pitch, so. It's really easy to fix, to, to, to modify these once you kind of get used to it. Hi, this is what your predictable voice sounds like. All right. And I always feel like it, it's, it's going to sound a little faster than it does when you do that setting. So, all right. Going back to our PowerPoint. Okay. Now, using the quick key to add a phrase. Okay. So, if you type a message on your keyboard, once that message is on there, you're, when you click on your quick keys, there will be a the plus symbol on there, which would, but it's only going to be there if you have something in the message window. So, so you can put something in the message window. You tap the use icon, which is that blue arrow, and then tap that reddish pink plus icon, which that has a circle around it. And then you select a category to store the phrase. And the cool thing is, if you have a um, the phrase and it's going to work with multiple categories. You could save it to multiple categories just by checking the box for each one of them. You can customize it by selecting um, the text and the image menus and then hit predictable to save. So I'll show you that here. So thank you for assisting my account. I'm not sure what else I'd use that for, but let's just say I hit the blue arrow plus sign. All right. So, how about help? I'm going to save it there, and I'm going to save it under feelings, because I have a lot of feelings about this account, I guess. Hit predictable. It's going to say save or discard. Hit save. So, phone chat. Moving a phrase or category. Okay, so if you want to, it's a good idea to have your phrases set up in the in the in the order you're going to use them, or to where one it makes sense where you're going to go from one to the other. So um, managing conversations um, is a, an important way to avoid delays and confusion uh, for someone um, and their communication partner. It could make conversations easier if you have the categories next to each other within the application. So, um, for example, managing a phone call, um, it would be easier when you list the phrases that you plan on using in sequential order. Okay, so how do we move um, categories and phrases? Okay, so if you, if you tap the phrases quick key, and then you swipe to um, find and select the category you want to um, move the, your phrases around. And then you uh, click on the editing pencil. And when your options pop up, you hit move. And then once that's up there, you get, um, then you just press down and drag the icon where you want it. And then you select done. So let's look at that here. Okay, so here's my phrases quick key. Let's say my phone chat. And I'm gonna edit. Oh. All right, edit. Move. Okay. And I clicked on one, it's gonna allow me to move any of these. You can see these the little three lines showing up on the right. And once I push my finger on it, it highlights the one I want to move and, and I can put it wherever I want. So my account number is, they're probably going to ask me, you know, what my phone number is and what my address is. And my live in the dream is, is normally what I would say when someone says, how are you doing today? So I might put that, um, 
ahead of that. So that's more kind of a greeting or I'm doing well, I can see on there. My thank you and have a great day, that's obviously a closing. So I'm gonna put those at the end. And then I, my first one on here is, um, bear with me while I'm using a speech generating device. Um, my name. And, um, or I'd like to place an order for pickup. I'm not sure what kind of uh, account I'd be dealing with that one, but so, um, in fact, so I click on the pencil, click on that one, hit delete, and that one's gone. Okay. So it's easy as that. And that's, for me, I think that's when I'm moving stuff around to make a conversation easier, it's probably more, more important to be moving the phrases within a category. Um, and when you have the actual, oops, my app closed itself, let's see. And the categories are nice to have in the same place too. So I have, you see I have phone um, chat next to phone chat. And because those are commonly used just um, phrases and my, my phone chat is where I'm gonna put my um, more detailed script for my um, conversation with whoever, me, whoever I'm calling. So adding media to a phrase. So app, um, add media after a phrase message speaks. And so a phrase label and message there are required in order to add multimedia. So you, ta you tap the phrases quick key icon to open the category section and you swipe left or right to view all the category screen pages. And then select the category of phrases. Tap the pencil icon to allow editing. And then tap the phrase you wish to edit. And then you move, edit, or delete. You get to hit edit. So to add audio, you would tap audio. And tap Tom's voice. And then for example, Tom's voice, you can use any one you want, but um, tap record audio and then okay to give predictable access to the microphone. Then you're gonna tap the microphone to, be, um, uh, to begin recording and then you hit stop to stop recording. And then you're gonna um, tap, or, or you could, uh, let's see, then you tap the play icon to preview what you just did. And then, um, or you could just choose from the predictable message bank uh, if you want to use like an emote sound. Um, and then when you're all done, you hit save or press or hit the predictable and, and then hit save when it pops up um, with save or discard. To add um, multimedia, so that way it, when you, or it'll, it'll, it'll open a video from YouTube, you tap multimedia, and then um, to add multi, a multimedia function to open a video from YouTube, you would, you would uh, tap select a video from YouTube and then type the name to search the YouTube videos. Um, and not all YouTube videos are available, so you select the video to play when the phrase is selected. Um, and then select the video to, to play and then tap back to get to the multimedia page. I'm guessing that, um, it probably is, uh, it's only, it probably, it probably edits out some um, videos that might have content that is not acceptable. So <laughs> that's, why I'm, that's why I'm guessing that not all, why, why not all videos are available there. And then a check mark appears by select a video from YouTube. And uh, to exit the video after selecting the phrase, tap on the video and then tap the X in the top left and then back on the top left. So that's a lot. And there's, because I'm getting towards the end of my um, time, I don't want, uh, I probably don't, I don't want to, this is a little longer to go into detailing. So um, if you like me to um, uh, send out a, a, a how-to on this, I can do that. Just, just email um, myself or Kevin.
Okay. So sending your message, email and social media. So um, to uh, many of us communicate via text, email and social media. So once a message is generated, it's really easy to send it over email or a chat app. Um, by tapping use in the navigation bar, there's a variety of ways to, to use a message that's been typed um, into the message window. So you hit use um, to open up the options to use the message in the message window. And then you tap the add phrase button to save the text into, an, into a new phrase. Um, you could tap copy to store it in, on the clipboard or paste to paste from the clipboard. You could um, tap email to compose an email. Um, of course, that's if you have your email already set up on the iPad. Um, if, you, if you're logged into Twitter, you can tap Twitter and share it that way. Um, if, and then uh, iMessage is available there as well if you are logged into the iPad. Um, newsfeed will show you a newsfeed of um, recent articles. It's not really for um, sharing in this way. And then hit history will show you a list of your previous messages. Um, and then tapping share allows you to share to different apps downloaded on the iPad, like Skype, Facebook, that, that sort of thing. So one thing that's really important when using this application um, is to set up automatic backups. Um, otherwise, you may be adding stuff and it's not going to be automatically backing up and then you risk losing their, your new content. So in your particular application, you want to click on the gear icon, tap on user, and then select online for to enable the automatic backups. So I'll show you that. So here I am, click on my little cog user which is a little purple guy in the middle on the left and then already online so offline and it's like it doesn't want me it's yelling at me saying hey this is locked so um it goes it goes back to online and once you try to change user information it's going to want you to enter a password if you have one okay so that is the end of the predictable uh, presentation. Um, if you have any questions, go for it. And if not, um, I will hand this back over to Kevin. Hey, thank you, Scott, Thank for all that information. I appreciate it. Um, tomorrow morning, we'll start at 930 again. Uh, I, I would hope that if you have the opportunity to practice the um, predictable application and the things that Scott just talked about, that you would be able to come with some questions tomorrow for uh, the first 20, 30 minutes, we'll be answering questions. And then after which, uh, Carl will introduce us to uh, Go Talk Now Plus, and we'll be doing that. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.